When it come to dead friends, believe me, I'ma slide. Catch you on slip, I'm putting tears in your mama's eyes. Say, what's cracking, YouTube? It's your boy, 16 to life, and I'm back like I'm on a pro violation. Yard down. Now, for those of y'all new to my page, in 1994, I got arrested. I was eventually sentenced to 16 years plus life, and I served 24 years straight in the California prison system. I normally come on here and tell prison stories, but every now and then on Fridays, I like to do what I call free game Friday. And basically, I don't want anybody to think that I'm endorsing or condoning the type of lifestyle that I used to live that got me to prison and while I was in prison. So from time to time, I like to do what I call free game Friday, which is something that my homies used to do when I was out there on the block. They would come through, not necessarily on Friday, but just come through and give me and my homies some game in hopes of helping us move smarter and wiser while we were in the streets and to transition out of the street eventually altogether, man. And so that's what I'm doing today. Let's hop right up into this video, man. So this video right here is about homies, you know, knowing who your real homies is, you know, your, your, your fam or whatever you call them out there in the streets, you know, your niggas, whatever it is, right? And a lot of times I know that when we out there, um, hanging with the homies or whatever, you know, loyalty is, is something that is, um, rated extremely high, man. You must have loyalty to your homies, whoever you consider your homies to be. And you expect loyalty as well from your homies. Right. And I've heard many people say, um, at many times, man, I'm riding with my homie right or wrong. And you know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't disagree with that. Right. I don't disagree with riding with your homie right or wrong when the situation gets physical and you have to help your homie from getting hurt. I do believe that there are times when if you see your homie doing something wrong and you know better, you don't ride with your homie right or wrong because a lot of times um, what your homie gets in also can put you in at harm's way. You know what I'm saying? If your homie is doing something um, that you know to be foul, that you know to be janky, that you know to be scandalous, that you know can come back on him and possibly come back on you as well. If you hang with your homie at a at a time when these dudes uh, come back to get some get back for whatever it is, whatever foul uh, act that he's done, you have to stop your homie and say, homie, that's not good. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of times, right? In the streets, we hanging out and some dudes will have a fear of speaking up against a negative act because it's not a fear of being physically assaulted. It's just a fear of being clowned by his homies and ostracized like, man, you ain't with it. Like you ain't with it. You know, sort of like that time in, in the movie uh, um, Boys in the Hood, man, when old boy asked to be let out the car, man, you know, his spirit didn't feel right about what was going on. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes, man, you have to speak up because at the end of the day, you are going to be the one suffering the consequences, right? If you see your homeboy doing something like when I when I first got to prison, this is how I was laced in terms of the car and the collective, right? Most definitely, you're going to ride with your homie when things get physical. But like I said, if this dude is doing something that you know to be wrong, he's getting ready to go in somebody's cell and steal something. You don't ride with him on that. You don't condone with him. You don't be a lookout. You tell a homie, no, homie, listen, don't do that, man, because in turn, that's going to come back on getting you in trouble. If I'm the lookout for you, it's going to come back on me for looking out for you. And even if I'm not the lookout, if they found out you stole, you stole something, you definitely fist to get boobopped and sent up off the yard. You know what I'm saying? And so um, we have to have enough common sense and be able to discern when it is a good time to tell our homeboys to stand down, man. You know, talking about this situation makes me think of a good homie that I had by the name of OZ, man. It was, you know, um, when I was out there on the streets at certain times, I think I may have been now looking back on everything. I think I may have been a little too quick to pull my pistol out and want to pop that thing. Uh, I think back to a, to several times now, my homie OZ said, no, chill. Look what you're doing. It's too many people around. Look, look, I look up, man. It's 15, 20 people around. You know, when we are in a certain type of mind state and we, when we are living that street life, we tend to get things confused, right? 
we tend to think that everybody is living that street life as well, man. But if you happen to shoot some stuff up and it's 15, 20 people around, you going to jail. Somebody is going to tell some certain way. Even back in my day when it wasn't cell phones and cameras recording everything, man, I was dumb enough to think that around the age of 19, 20, that I could shoot up a, a club or whatever, right? I remember we got into it one time at a club, man. I whipped that thing out with fifth the bus. The homie OZ grabbed my hand and said, chill, what is you doing, man? Look around. It's 30, 40 people out there, right? Was I foolish enough to think that I could shoot somebody and out of all these 30, 40 people, these people wouldn't fit to go and tell somebody, you know, uh, even maybe it may have been a dude there who went, who may have went home and told his mom, you know, chill was up there shooting at the club. Chill, did, chill the one. And maybe she was the one who would make the phone call to the police. You know, with all these people, people is going to go walk back and talk and tell somebody and somebody's going to tell somebody and somebody's going to tell somebody. And next thing I would have known. I'm sitting by in I'm sitting in the cuff car or sitting up in the uh in the police office being questioned about a shooting, right? So my thing is if you know better, you have to get that information to your homie, you know. Um if your homie is gonna have knowledge of you doing something that could be detrimental to you, man, and he sits back and, and doesn't say anything, that's really not your homie. You know what I'm saying? And vice versa, man, because we all should want the best for our homies, right? As I sit here today, man, and, you know, life seemed like it just went by so fast, right? I think of a lot of my homies who are, who are no longer here, and I think, man, what possibly could they have accomplished if they had had an opportunity and the time to live out their life? You know, I have, man, several homies who, who died 16, 17 years old, 19, 20 years old, without even having a chance to live life and experience anything, right? And so now as I'm older, um, I know a lot more, especially than I knew when I was 19, 20 years old. I think of those homies, right? And I think, man, I wonder if, you know, somebody had shared just a little bit of information with them. Could it have possibly helped them move a certain way? Now, if you out on the block or you out at the mall and something happened, it just happened. Sometimes we can't control certain things, right? But at other times we can due to the information we feed each other and we feed our homies, right? If we, if we are on a plan to wake up every day and go out and do something negative, at some point in time, those consequences of our actions is going to come back on us. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there are ways to be out there in the street doing illegal things without doing scandalous things. You know what I'm saying? If you out there, if you feel that you got to hustle to get your bread, then you just got to hustle to get your bread. But if you out there, if you jacking, you robbing, you giving dudes fake product, fake products and stuff like that, you know, um, you, you, you know, you jumping the gate on cats as they call it out there in Chicago, you taking people's pistols, you know, you taking people's stuff. Eventually, man, some of those negative actions will fall back on you point in case because case in point, because everybody is not going for it. Everybody is not going for it, man. So my thing is if a person really has love for you and he's your homie, he wants to see you strive. He wants to see you better. He doesn't want to see you risk your life with a fifty or seventy-five dollar item, or even a three or four hundred dollar item. You gain that item today, but two or three days later, them dudes come back and they pop you out. Who has won? You know what I'm saying? Uh, and so that's what I'm trying to for you guys get you guys to see that first and foremost, right? If you know better, you share the information with your homie and you demand that your homie do better when he's around you. That way he won't get you into nothing, right? I know we all got them homies that every time we go somewhere, man, it's always that one particular homie starting some BS. You know what I'm saying? And since this is the homie, at times we tend, we have a tendency to love him and give him a pass for, uh, the bull stuff that this dude stays in, man. But at what point are we going to stop letting this homie uh, in danger and jeopardize our safety and our freedom? Because uh, when you put yourself in a position to ride for a homie who is known for doing dumb stuff, being a crash dummy and potentially wrecking the car every time you hang with them, in the event you happen to get caught up, you're going to have to be the one doing that time, right? And so um, 
I was taught that, especially in prison, man, if I'm going to ride for somebody for something or something and put myself on the line, I have a right, not necessarily a right. I have an obligation to speak up and speak my mind when I think that something is not a just cause, man, if I'm going to be sitting in the hole. And like I said, don't let the fear of feeling that you will be persecuted or ostracized or talked bad about by your homies because everybody has the, um, everybody wants to pretend that we're down and we're with it, right? But let me tell you from firsthand experience, man, when dudes start going to jail and getting locked up in the cop car for something big, everybody is not going to be down, man. So you have to realize that, right? You have to realize that, hey, man, I'm going to be the one that's sitting up locked up in jail. And if this is not right and something that we're doing or we're about to do doesn't sit right with my spirit, I'm not going to endorse it with my quietness and not saying nothing. I'm not going to endorse it with silence and act like it's OK when I know I know that this is something we shouldn't be doing. Right. You got the you got the dude around the corner right now. You may not know this dude that well, but, you know, this dude is selling big work. Right. And one of your homies get the bright idea to run up in this dude's house and rob this dude. He just didn't got word that this dude is at the mall shopping or whatever. And now you want to run up in the house and rob this dude or run up in the house and steal this dude's stuff. But then you get the feeling like, nah, this ain't gonna, man, this ain't gonna, this ain't gonna, this ain't gonna come out good. But you don't want to say nothing because fear your homie said, oh man, you, you ain't down, you, you scared. Man, you have the right to speak up homie, and you should speak up if you know something is not sitting right with your spirit. A good homie is never going to unknowingly or a, excuse me, a good homie is never going to knowingly put you in a position that possibly can bring harm to you, man. So that's what I'm saying. It's time and especially with all the time they give it out nowadays in all states, man, they giving out time. Right. So if you happen to have a homie that's doing something and you hang with this dude and you know that, OK, hanging with this dude is going to get me caught up, man. It's uh, it's time to speak up. It's time to evaluate who you hang with, man. But most importantly, as a gangster, you have to speak your mind, man. A real gangster, he has he at there gonna be at times, man, when you gonna have to stand on your own too, right? A gangster can't follow behind other people. That's it, and that's just that's just what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? So I advise all you guys out there that's in them streets, man, start standing on your own too. You have to have something that you believe in to push forward with, right? Like I say, man, when situations get funky, they just get funky. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to handle your business, but there is no need in putting more negativity on your plate when you already out there in a world that's filled with, that's filled with violence, that's filled with shenanigans, so on and so forth. I'm talking about when you out there and you in the streets and you doing whatever you're doing, you know. Of course, when we live every day, you are always going to be um, potentially at risk just due to what's going on. But when you put yourself in a subculture of gang banging, being in the streets, then you add an extra element of violence and dangerousness to your life. Then you compound that by running around doing scandalous stuff trying to snatch people's chains and so on and so forth, it's got to end bad, right? How is something like that going to end good? So what I'm saying is, man, sit back, evaluate your homies, evaluate the things that you do, because I'm telling you, man, if you get three years on the streets of good living and you get 20 years in prison, how does that add up? Anyway, man, you already know who it is. It's your boy, 16 to life. 